Hi everybody, Dan Bailey here with another Fujifilm video. Before I get started, I just want to take a minute to say thank you guys very much for your support. In the past year, you've really helped me grow my channel here, and I've left a lot of great comments and given me some great feedback. And so to thank you guys, I wanted to offer you my Photography on the Brain video lesson bundle. This is a 20 lesson course uh, for 50% off. In my Photography on the Brain lessons, I go a little deeper and more cerebral than I do here on the YouTube channel. In these lessons, I talk about a variety of subjects that are designed to challenge you to think about creativity in different ways and ways that you can use these ideas to push your own style and your own boundaries with photography. So check out this link right here for more information on my Photography in the Brain course and how you can get your 50% discount. I love wide-angle lenses. I always have. As far as I'm concerned, the wider the better, especially if it's a fixed lens. And usually fixed lenses are lighter and smaller and more compact than zoom lenses, uh, which makes them great for travel, they're easier to carry, and they're less conspicuous and less cumbersome when you're out shooting in the world. Now I've found wide-angle lenses to be a great choice for shooting just about everything. They're ideal for landscapes, travel, for shooting indoors, and if you want that immersive first-person feel where you're right in the middle of the action, then a wide lens is definitely the way to go. Wide lenses are also great for shooting environmental portraits. They allow you to get relatively close to your subjects, but still show uh, enough of the environment to help build a more comprehensive narrative of your photograph and tell a better story. I've been using the Fujifilm XF 14mm f2.8 lens for almost seven years now, and that's this guy right here. It was actually the first X-series lens I ever got, and in all those years, it's been the most widely used of all my Fuji lenses. In that time, I found the 14 to be an essential part of my outdoor photography mirrorless camera setup. And I've taken it on multiple bike tours and long bike rides, ski days, taken it hiking in the mountains, traveling. It pretty much goes with me everywhere. If I'm leaving the house and I'm taking more than one lens, then the 14 is always in my bag. It's also a very easy lens to use when you're shooting one-handed, which I often do if I'm riding bikes, or if I'm you know, hanging off a rock face, or if I'm trying to block the sun or direct my models, or if I'm trying to shoot while I'm driving or flying. Now, please note, I would never condone that kind of reckless activity but I certainly won't tell on you if you do it anyway. First of all, the Fuji 14 28 is a rock solid lens. It's built with a combination of metal and plastic, metal in all the right places, and enough plastic in the right places to help it save weight. So overall it's 235 grams. It's about an inch and a half shorter in size than the 18 to 55 when, when that lens is fully retracted. Inside the lens are 10 elements in seven groups, including two aspheric elements and three extra low dispersion elements. The plastic lens hood fits really easily with a simple bayonet turn, uh, and it's very snug. I've never had this thing come off. As far as durability goes, I've knocked this thing around quite a bit in the past few years. Uh, the barrel's got a few little dings on it, uh, the lens hood's a little bit scratched, but the glass is in perfect shape, and really it, it shows very few signs of wear for how much abuse I've given it. The 14 also has three features that a lot of lenses don't have. First of all, it's an R lens, so it has a working numbered aperture ring. It has a depth of field scale with distance markers on it, and a manual focus right on the lens. Now what I mean by that is it's one of the clutch lenses. So the barrel pops in and out, the focus ring pops in and out. And so if you want to do manual focus, you don't have to reach for the little switch in the front of your camera. You just pull the barrel back and you're in manual focus, and that overrides whatever autofocus mode the camera is currently set to. It's pretty handy because if you're out shooting and you want to switch to manual focus, you know, here you're doing autofocus right here and the lens is locked, simply pull the barrel back and now it moves. It moves freely and now you're in manual focus. And you don't have to go to the front switch and go, okay, no, I need to put this on M. Maybe you're photographing a flower with manual focus, working very deliberately and suddenly a bird flies by, or a bee, and you want to grab that. You just simply push the barrel back out, and now you're back on autofocus, and you can track that moving subject through the frame. In addition, when you pull that focus clutch back, uh, that's when you can see the numbers on the manual focus distance scale. And this allows you to make those critical hyperfocal distance decisions where you're trying to get everything in focus, or you're trying to calculate what's going to be in focus based on the aperture that you're currently using. You could call it the slowdown switch, because we all know that when you slow down, and start using your brain a little bit more carefully, then you're gonna end up making better pictures. It's those little things that help you transition from one mode to another very quickly, and that efficiency adds to your own proficiency and your own technical abilities as a photographer. 
And that's one of the things I love about modern cameras, especially the Fuji cameras. Uh, you can use them in the style that suits you. Whether you want to shoot in autofocus, aperture priority, manual, manual focus, many of the settings, like your exposure and focus modes, can easily be set with a dial or a switch or a function button that's easily accessible. Using the 14 2.8 is a real joy. It's got an ultra-wide 90-degree angle of view. If you were to compare this to 35 millimeter, it would give you the equivalent of a 21 millimeter lens. It also has such a nice, compact, tight build quality. It's just such a nice, solid feeling lens in your hand. And of course, you've got that simplicity of one focal length, one view, one fantastic look that works really well for a wide variety of subject matter. And it's razor sharp from edge to edge with almost no distortion and delivers beautiful crisp imagery. And that's one of the awesome things about using prime lenses is they're calibrated for one specific distance and that one focal length and it delivers that with the highest possible level of detail. In order to get that kind of near perfect image quality with a zoom lens, you'd have to spend a whole lot more money and probably carry a much bigger lens. And that's one of the things I love so much about prime lenses is you get that amazing level of detail, the highest image quality with a relatively compact, relatively small lens. With most budget zoom lenses, you're gonna inherently see some variation in quality, uh, especially out at the edges, uh, when you're zooming across the range. With the fixed lens, you just don't have that, especially with the Fuji fixed lenses. They're engineered with so much precision, they give you an incredible level of quality. With a 14, all the focusing is done internally, and this gives it very fast, very speedy autofocus performance, which is amazing considering it's one of the original X-Series lenses. Some of the older Fuji lenses don't have as fast autofocus motors as some of the newer ones, but the 14's always been pretty snappy. It has a minimum focusing distance of only seven inches or 18 centimeters, which allows you to get extremely close to your subject matter and capture your scenes with a very compelling vantage point. I found it to be a highly capable lens for shooting action and any other kind of moving subject matter, even portraits and, and fast moving people. I've even shot full on fast moving bike races with this lens and it's done just fine. Now, if you're doing manual focus with this lens, it's really easy. As I said, you just pull the clutch back and you're in manual focus. You've got that distance scale. You can use either the EVF or the LCD screen to gauge your focus. And if you press in the rear command dial while you're doing manual focus, uh, you'll get a 100% image view. It'll zoom right in to show you uh, so you can critically gauge your focus levels. You can also make use of Fuji's manual focus assist settings, uh, which my favorite are the focus peaking highlights. Uh, and depending on what camera you use, you might also have a digital split image or a digital microprism as well. So from that standpoint, manual focus on the Fujis, uh, especially with this lens, is pretty easy and it can be a rather enjoyable experience. Now another useful thing about the focusing clutch is that when you put it in manual focus, it actually has a stop at infinity and it really is infinity. And so you don't have to guess. And so this makes it an extremely useful lens for shooting night skies and doing astrophotography. Because when you're shooting in the dark, you can't see, there's not enough light to focus. And so being able to just set the camera to infinity and know that it's there is a huge advantage. And so for that reason, the 14 is my preferred lens for shooting night skies and doing star and northern lights photography. Now one thing to keep in mind, the Fuji 14 is not weather sealed. And while this might be a concern, here's how I look at it. Of course, we'd rather have weather sealed lenses, especially if we're shooting in difficult environments outside, uh, shooting in the rain, in the wind, dusty conditions. But I've used my 14 for years, oftentimes in challenging situations, and I've never had a problem. Sometimes with a non-weather sealed lens, you can get dust inside the elements. I don't have any of that in all the times I've been shooting with it. And when it comes to shooting in wet weather, here's how I look at that. I've shot quite a bit in the rain and in wet situations with my 14 and I've never had a problem. And the reality is that if it's raining that hard, my bigger problem is keeping the lens itself dry, keeping water off of that front element. So I try to do everything I can to cover the lens or shield it from the rain uh, just so I can get sharp images and not have you know, splotchy watermarks all over the front of the lens. But again, if it's raining that hard, the weather sealing isn't going to help you keep water off the front of the lens. So yeah, I'd rather have weather sealed lenses but I'm not gonna not go shoot outside with a non-weather sealed lens. 
I wish my 14 was weather sealed. It's not. I make the best of it and it's never let me down. Now I'm not going to go dunk it in the water or, you know, let it sit out in the rain for an hour at a time. I, I try to protect it as best I can. Fuji's 14mm 2.8 is not a cheap lens, nor is it an inexpensive lens. Good glass costs money, although it's certainly not priced out of reach for what you get, and it does go on sale from time to time. Buying this lens is akin to making a serious investment in your photography, and not just because how your images will look, but because it's a lens that you can easily fall in love with for shooting just about everything. As I said, this has been one of my favorite pieces of camera gear for years now, and I have absolutely nothing negative to say about it. If you use an interchangeable lens X-series camera, and you want to take your imagery to a whole new level of style and feel, then I highly recommend this lens. So I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Please subscribe to my channel, leave me a comment. If you are a Fuji shooter, or if you're thinking about getting into the system, you'll definitely want to check out my best-selling ebook, X-Series Unlimited. This almost 400-page guide tells you everything you need to know how to get the best results and the most creative liberation and fun from your Fuji. You can find me on Patreon and social media at Dan Bailey Photo, and you can visit my blog and website as well. So thanks again for watching, have fun with your Fuji out there, and I'll see you next time.